It's finally here, lads. The end of resetting players for free. It's now going to cost you GP. And all I have to say is that this is going to be the end times for eFootball. Oh, hell no! No, I'm being slightly dramatic, right? But they did talk about this, and it is going to be... This is going to creep up on people, genuinely, right? It's going to creep up like collar in the night. You don't know what's coming until it's too late, okay? And a lot of people will log in and they'll be like, oh, I can just reset my players again, and they mightn't have played in a couple of days. Or if you're a newcomer and you've not got this warning, right? So currently, you are seeing me go into my players here and literally just reset their training. So when you train a player, you put in the training XP, you put whatever stats you want boosted up, and then obviously that player can be tested out. If it doesn't work for you, you can try a different build. So if you want a 99 overall finish in Haaland and he find that he's too slow, you can reset him. It doesn't cost you a penny. It doesn't cost you any in-game currency or nothing. If you want to try him out fully speed, you know, if he's any better that way or auto allocate or whatever way you want to try him, you can try him and then reset him for free if it doesn't work out for you and retrain him the way that you want. And on and on and on. You can do this unlimited times as you see here. I'm just going to cycle through a couple of players that I've retrained quite a few times. So the likes of young players like Evan Ferguson, you know, he only costs about 17,000 GP or he's going to cost 17,000 GP. But what will happen is when you go to actual players like that you want to continue to use, such as Ronaldo, he's going to cost you half a million. Now bear in mind that to buy Mbappe in the game, the same price is to retrain Cristiano Ronaldo. If you want to retrain Haaland or one of the top players like that, it's going to cost you 600,000 GP, okay? So this is what we have at the moment. 600,000, no charge. It's free until the 28th of September, which is tomorrow. But once tomorrow hits, it's going to cost you 600,000 after maintenance. So essentially and simply put, from the 29th of this month, September 2023, you are going to be having to pay to reset your players. So that brings us on to the kind of video here, right, of what players to train, what players to not really retrain. I would say retrain every single one of your players that you plan on keeping. I think if you have 50 top players, or if you're just starting out your journey, there are a couple of hints and tricks, tips and tricks I will give you. Now, I'm hopefully going to be streaming later, lads. I have to go to the dentist today, so I'm getting this video out there, and it will be going live. But we'll hopefully we'll be streaming where we're going to be retraining all our players like for like two hours. We're going to be talking through the players. But essentially my advice is, just doing a couple of players here, is with goalkeepers or with defenders, any player really needs to be a specialized position now and a specialized player. I see a lot of people complaining about the gameplay and a lot about, you know, blocks and interceptions and stuff. And reason being is that while the gameplay has gotten a little bit more defensive assisted since launch... I still feel like that the core eFootball 24 gameplay is better than 23. And a lot of that is down to how you train your players and knowing the mechanics of the game, right? And being able to bypass those blocking lanes. So simply put, when you're training up players like Donnarumma, if you're training up tall goalkeepers, I'm going through this quite quickly, so feel free to rewind it a little bit. If you're training tall goalkeepers, you know what you want from him. You want reach, you want height, you want phys physicality. Somebody like Casillas is going to be more of a manual goalkeeper that you're going to be making a lot of manual saves, reflex saves. You also need high jumping to be able to clear balls from corners and to take control of balls like that. That's what she said. But jumping is going to be 90. And then we're also going to have high reach. We're going to have um, the rest of the stats there with the reflexes. They're not going to be as high as Donna, right? So if you've got a goalkeeper like Donna Roma, Oliver Kahn, now obviously the likes of Czech and the legend goalkeepers like Casillas, um, and those, they can be trained pretty much in any stat. They're all going to have their stats up around the 90s. But for the lower rated keepers, right? Um, any of these keepers that you see here that I haven't trained, such as Shea Given, I've him trained. Um, or even Ter Stegen, who we have trained here. Ter Stegen is kind of, he's under that 190 centimeter height. So he's still tall enough. He's got good player skills. But you can actually train him up. The only thing he's weak on is catching the ball. And a lot of goalkeepers are weak on catching the ball with this current build of the gameplay. But... Basically, if a goalkeeper is over 190, I would have, you know, his awareness really high and his reflexes really high. If a goalkeeper is under 190, I'd have his reflexes high and his jumping really high. Similarly, we've got, I keep saying similarly, I love that word, but similarly with Timber here, right? We're not going to try turn Timber in because of his lack of real height. Um, he's tall, obviously, but not for a center back when you compare him with the likes of Van Dijk or Maldini or one of those guys. He's your mobile, versatile centre-back. Now, as I said, I am going through this quick. I'm just retraining a couple of players on the fly and just having a chat and catching you up. 
but anybody that is training players and looking to retrain players and is panicking maybe you can't actually do it before the maintenance and you're watching this video and you're saying right i only have today because i'm away tomorrow or whatever i can't do the retraining i would always have every player specialized so for timber here i'm not going to focus on timber being like a very very good player in the air because i'm going to have a partner beside him such as marquinhos i'm going to have somebody like van dyke who is not going to be focused on speed or versatility he's going to be focused on being my aerial um stopper so everything that comes at me if i'm playing against somebody that has Haaland up front i'm not going to be really man marking him with timber so to speak van dyke is going to take on a lot of that responsibility for beating him in the air you know um so for his aerial strength and his defending i'm going to literally push that through the roof as max as i can possibly go and we're going to really ignore dexterity and lower body strength now obviously with the booster players like the likes of roberto carlos they can have like you know 100 aggression or, a, or 90 aggression and 100 dexterity but for most players you do have to pick where you want that player to specialize if you've got a tall center back and you're going to be using him predominantly to stop target men and to stop aerial threats boost up his aerial abilities don't have to have you don't have to have a load of speed or dexterity or mobility if you have a partner beside him like timber or alaba or kunde go for speed and still have be that aggressive speed kind of win the ball this is probably best explained with the box to box defenders right i would say the two most important positions in the game at the moment are dmf right whether you choose an anchorman or a destroyer and i would say a center forward just for sco scoring goals but third to that i would say is a box to box midfielder right i prefer box to box over destroyer most times and if i'm looking at one of my favorite ever cards released goretzka i know what i have in goretzka where i'm going to not try to turn him into an attacking and a defensive threat i know what goretzka is good at chasing the ball blocking passing lanes he's tall he's very very defensive his player id is just a real good disruptor and a stopper but his stamina is quite poor so from this i'm going to just max out his defensive capabilities i'm going to max out his dexterity and his lower body to try and get him as quick as he can um can go and also to have that engine to be able to run around for 80 plus minutes and then if i need to trade him out uh sim similar there we've got barella right barella is also a box to box but he's a smaller base player so when we max out barella here and i'm just training him up while we're doing this when we max out barella here i'm kind of saying to myself right i could make barella as a box to box as an equal with goretzka right and that that's a possibility that's no problem i could do that right when we reset his player progression it's going to cost us nothing obviously but when we actually train him up we can go 99 aggression we can go 96 aggression we can do whatever we want to do and still have a good core base stat for the rest of his stats or else we could go very full-on attacking or else we can go complete where you're going box to box you've got defense you've got attack barella is a brilliant card if you especially have this card or any card of barella he's an excellent card right i think he's probably up in the top three box to box midfielders in the game but i would say that if i'm going picking goretzka over barella or i'm picking barella over goretzka i know what role i want them to play so for example i wouldn't play pedri as my center midfielder if i'm playing against a guy that has an unbelievable squad where i need a little bit more blocking and intercepting in midfield i probably play goretzka if i'm able to express myself a little bit and be a bit more attacking and be in control of the game we can go with a really attacking build of barella so it all depends on your team as i said this is just a quick kind of heads up on the reset player progression it all depends the team that you have let me know what you guys want to know from this and i'll do a follow-up video and we also will be live streaming as well so make sure you keep an eye on the channel hopefully be live streaming later um yeah and that's it i will talk to you in a bit don't forget to subscribe